on the Queen Anne's County Board of Education uh, work session for July the 14th, 2021. Uh, do I motion to go into closed session? Uh, Mr. President, pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104, I do move the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction and or to perform an administrative function and or to consult with counsel. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll be back at five o'clock, July the 14th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? pledge I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have anybody had a chance to look at our uh, closed minute, open minutes, or did open session minutes from uh, July the 7th? I have a motion. Motion to approve minutes from July second. 7th. Second. Um, for a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Ayes have it. You also had a chance to look at our closed session meetings for July the 7th, 2021. Make a motion to accept the minutes for the closed session July 7th. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, so saying, saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Approval of agenda. Have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, uh, now we'd like to recognize our student board members from last year. Yes, um, we have one with us today, and um, Miss Alexa Gross, we would like for her to come up. Yeah. And her proud mommy is with her, mm -hmm. and we thank her for being here too, and for raising such a great student. Um, now, I'm understanding that you never had a chance to actually sit up here. Is no. That correct? Well, Aww. come have a seat up here. Just, just have a seat up. Here. <laughs> sit, sit, the just, just, just sit in the center. Just sit in the center. With a very unique <laughs> ear. Yeah. She's, uh, she's going to sit okay. Just have a seat. It's, it's fine. Wherever you want to sit. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> just look out. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody get a picture. Oh, of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> present you with these flowers and say thank you so much for your year of service. We know it was the most challenging year. I'm sure. We really appreciate you there with us and doing what you needed to do to get the job done. Thank and you. it shows a lot about your character and who you are and we wish you the best of luck during your next adventure. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Thank you for thank staying you. late with us some nights here. She was here with us. Yes. <laughs> but good. thank you for everything and we thank appreciate you. it. And, uh, you want to get a picture? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Come on up, Mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. We will have uh, new board members coming that uh, we're not able to attend tonight for our uh, board meetings in the uh, future. Yes, yeah, so Mr. Um, Brett Pfeiffer from Queen Anne's County High School and Mr. Jackson Park from Ken Island High School. So they both have big shoes to fill after the most yeah. challenging year next year, but I know that they're up for the challenge and I look forward to meeting them both in person. Yeah, next, inf this is for information item. Uh, Carl, I guess a Clay. Good evening, President Smith, members of the board, and Dr. Salens. 
My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the Facilities Planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And I'm here with you this evening to bring you and the public up to date on our most recent discussions regarding the Clay Target team at Kent Island High School. So as a member of the U.S. Clay Target League, the schedule that we will plan to compete in will be for the spring sports season. Registration typically happens through February and then practices and competitions not until April. So the proposed timeline that we're looking at is not until next spring season. This is good. We hope that we're well ahead of the timeline this year. It'll give the coaches the necessary time to advertise to prepare and to get some fundraising done if it's necessary. We have had some calls hoping that this would be a fall sport, but based on the U.S. Clay Target League schedule, it is something we'll be participating in in the spring. So we wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. To participate with the U.S. Clay Target League and their competitive program, we have to be affiliated with a specific school. Just so everyone understands that's the reasoning behind the team and being specific to Kent Island High School, we have to have a sponsoring high school to participate in this program. In talking with Dr. Salins about the Clay Target team, we discussed the possibility of formatting this first year of the program as a pilot program. So US Clay Target League recommends that we do one instructor to every 10 students. So an idea would be to pilot this first year with 10 students. We would see the availability of our coaching staff going forward and then the student interest and see what that looked like for the following year. So that was one idea that has been floated. To move forward, our department would benefit from some discussion and guidance for the best way to structure this team going forward. So option number one, if we structure the US or the Clay Target team at Kent Island High School as an extracurricular activity, this would be along the lines of mountain biking, of equestrian, of our sailing program. This is where the coaching staff are on a volunteer basis. They are not necessarily uh, employees of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Then our insurance carrier, Mabe, has strongly suggested that we try to develop an MOU between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and the U.S. Clay Target League, because this would assure that we knew the roles and the responsibilities of the league, the roles and the responsibilities of the school. We reached out to the U.S. Clay Target League, and they indicated that that is not something that they do with any other school system, that it usually, that agreement is between um, the school and the coaching staff. So the result of that, in the event that we would have any type of incurrence, um, innately some of the liability would fall to the coaching staff. So what we would recommend, if this indeed is an extracurricular activity, is that we require the coaches to hold some personal liability insurance as well with a minimum coverage of $1 million. And we do have a draft of a coach's agreement that would give us an idea of how that would look. The second option is if the clay target team is deemed an official sport at Kent Island High School, then the coaching staff would be paid coaches of the district. They would be employees of the district. Mabe, in speaking with them, since they are insurance carrier, they had a preference for this model because then they felt all of the staff would be covered under the board insurance. There's also a tort cap that is a benefit to the school system that the coaches would be covered under as well. So that's that's part of their rationale. So in this scenario, we would not require an MOU for coaches. We would not require any type of waiver of responsibility from parents because this would be a school-sponsored activity. The outcome here is that we would need some additional funds to the athletics operating budget to cover the paid coaching staff, to cover transportation, which we do for all of our other um, sports for the high schools. And we would need to look at just some small costs for practices and competitions. There's a possibility that we would need to also look at providing some of the equipment, such as the guns and the ammunition, um, for those that didn't have it if, in the event, they needed that. So that's one of the logistics that would have to be figured out in the event that this is um, an official sport. So that's why we wanted to bring this up for discussion and review and just tell you and the public where we were at this point. 
the idea of owning the system, owning a gun, can the coaches and them have, could they have their, could they lend guns to? That's a possibility. That's a possibility. And we would have to figure out where they came from and, and how we assured that they were in good working order. But that's definitely a possibility. And I think that's something that the coaches have floated as well, that there are, um, there's equipment that can be borrowed mm -hmm. for the program. What are we talking as costs for a year to put this? I mean, I know we love the transportation, this and that. And I mean, we talking... Do you have any, have we got any estimate of what a For coaching staff, we would probably be, depending on how this is structured, again, it would differ. It's probably in the area of about $1,800 to $3,500, depending on if it's a head coach, if it's how we deem the coaching staff. It would also depend on number of students as well as number of coaches. If we started with the pilot program that we mentioned, we would only be looking at 10 students for the first year and one coach. So we would anticipate that the cost would be pretty low as well. There's a very good chance that transportation would be something that the students would want to provide for themselves. Lots of the competitions happen on Saturdays, and so therefore there may be a lot of parent involvement as well. Um, with a pilot program, I couldn't anticipate the cost would be too high, and the team has indicated that they're willing to do some fundraising as well that potentially could cover some of those costs. And you said that the coaches were more amenable to um, the first option, right? Second. Being an extracurricular sport and securing extra insurance coverage? We and have so. not had specific conversations with the coaching staff yet. Okay. We wanted to bring this to you first to see what some of the discussion and direction was. Well, um, I do like the idea of it being a sport. I know I, I had indirect, uh, I've had email conversations with the coaches just to get some more information. And, um, you know, I'm 10, that's going to be tough, to, even as a pilot, because I know that when they sent out the informational piece, uh, what has it been, a year and a half, two years now, I freaked there was a hundred and something uh, positive replies mm -hmm. at the meeting. So pilot, I can understand it. Limiting it to 10 might be, you know, tough. Um, but the other sports that we have, other than paying the coaches, do they do we provide monies or do they all do their fundraising? They all do their own fundraising. Okay. So those that are extracurricular activities do it on their own. Um, it's not something we don't provide transportation for them. We don't provide equipment for them. Yeah. Well, I think it's great to. I would want to personally would want it labeled a sport. Um, certainly don't mind pilot, but would like to open it up to maybe 20. I know they had at least um, three people that were interested in coaching. Um, and if it's you're talking 3,500, maybe I'm just throwing the numbers out. 3,500 for a head coach and 2,000 each for two assistants. That's pretty minimal outlay for another sport, but I think it's great. It's, um, I'm excited about seeing how they do. Uh, this is open, even though we're saying Ken Island, this is open up both to the yes. whole county yes. system. It would is, be open to our high school students. Just high school, so it'd be only open Correct. to high school, ninth, 12th grade? Yes, because okay. it's a ninth through 12th grade program through U.S. Clay Target I think League. they shoot up in northern part of the county at the yes. speed range, but yes. it would be open to everybody. Um, have, have the coaches gotten, I mean, I, I like the idea of a pilot getting their feet in there and, and, and doing it in, in a very orderly manner, but also don't want to, if there's 100 and we're only doing 10, that's a pretty wide gap. If there's 15, we're doing 10, but if there's 30 or 40, I don't, that, I would just like to be, you know, because I think you have to build it up. Uh, to do that, that would be my one concern. We could certainly survey to get a better idea of how many um, would want to participate and then try to modify that as appropriate. Okay. And this, and you're telling me it starts, their, their <clears throat> program starts officially in the spring. That's when they have their competition. Yes. It'd be, I mean, can they work, and I know what the question is going to come up, but we, we want to start meeting and doing something in the fall. What, where, do we, what, where does that fall into? We'll have to talk with U.S. Clay Target League about the logistics there. Um, as with any other sport, I'm sure there are parameters of outside of the season mm -hmm. play. So we'll have to look into that. I don't know the answer offhand as to how far ahead of time they're able to start practicing. And I, and I don't know, you know where this generated from, but I do know you know you have the ski club in Suttersville and, mm -hmm. and a trap trap range up in a couple places. You know, someone might already be shooting there now, but I don't know. You know what's allowed as far as organized for that and stuff. That would be my yes. Talk to the, 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 the who's the, there's one gentleman Connolly, mm -hmm. Sean Connolly. Mr. Have Connolly. We been, have we been in strict in touch with him just to 
see where we are too? No, not in recent months. I have not. We're kind of waiting on this direction to get some feedback from him as to if we know that this is an extracurricular activity, the conversation will go a an long, long way. He has to have insurance. The Correct. other one, it's under we our... We would provide we, that. We, we would, would provide that like we do other things. And then we have like the tort thing, which limits the uh, liability on that. Yes. Personally, that sounds like a better way for right. better way. If it's a me. sport, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do we choose Kent Island and not Queen Anne since most of the trap places are up north? That was the preference of the coach, and that was the desire. Uh, he had already reached out to Mr. Schreckengast, principal at the time, and uh, Mr. Harding, the uh, athletic director, and had some conversations about that. And both of them had also indicated that they would be in support. They do need a school sign-off, so the principal of the school has to give their approval to this program. Um, and so I believe that's where it came from, that they would be the sponsoring school. So here's my concerns. If this is a sport, we need a hard and fast budget to look at because, of course, we've already settled our budget for next year that doesn't include this sport. So not only do you have coaches' fees, you have transportation fees. Each each team gets a budget from the school system, does it not? That's correct. So that needs to be figured, which, of course, right now we don't have this money. Right. So I'd like to see a, a hard budget to look at the numbers if it's even possible. Yeah, and, and frankly, I, I'm more inclined to, you know, have it as an extracurricular activity. Um, that's kind of how it was promoted when Mr. Connolly first came in. Uh, I think he came in twice to present it. Um, you know, obviously with the implication that the school was not going to budget any of it, and it would all be on uh, donations and fundraising and that kind of thing. And that fundraising could still pay for the, for the, um, you know, principal on an insurance uh, policy as well to cover those costs. Yes. Um, uh, I'm not so sure uh, how the cap, I guess, wouldn't fit in there because it would be part of that sorry, school system. Right. So that would be, obviously be up to the coaches to decide if they want to accept that liability. Yeah, Maeve's recommendation of, exactly. of one million. Right. Um, that's why we were hoping for a little bit of direction because these are some of the right. conversations that we want to have with Mr. Connolly just, you know, so he understands the pros and cons. And as a sport, which you mentioned earlier is, you know, if we're going to be buying guns and ammo, um, that's probably not something that I would be recommending. Out of curiosity, if we did it as sport and we didn't have it in the budget, would their fundraising, could they use their fundraising to pay for their coaches as well? I don't think that would be equitable. I think we could have some concerns there. Okay. Yeah, I think we would create some inequities okay. through the district and then that could be concerning. Could we do the pilot, would it be possible to do a pilot as an extracurricular and if it does well, then put it into our budget as a sport the following year? Is Let's that? look at that option, sure. And have them volunteer the first year, mm -hmm. the coaches. They would have to have that. And but insurance. we could fundraise for their insurance policies. Is that correct? That would not be an issue. If and it's uniforms. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think you'd have a lot of organizations that would probably donate and stuff like that. Because I've I've heard some some things about that. My biggest concern is is this insurance thing on a, a million dollars. You know, is is it, it, what's that going to be? We estimated three to four hundred dollars for a yearly policy. Too bad. I have a question about borrowing guns. Who's liable if we have borrowed the equipment from, say, a local person who's volunteered to help? I mean, does it fall under the school policy? Does it fall under the MOU? Does it fall? Does it fall under the individual that loaned the gun? We don't know if that gun is in. Are we loaning guns? I thought the school, if we purchase some of the um, equipment, because that's all that it would be, just like we do the football equipment. I thought that's what you meant—that we would be purchasing it and we would be loaning it to the students who are participating. You were not talking that. You were talking borrowing a gun from just a. There is. So, as a extracurricular activity, what Mr. Connolly has indicated is through some of the other leagues that they participate in, there are firearms that are available for use for students who don't have them or to try them out beforehand before they're purchasing something to know that they're purchasing the right thing. 
if this is indeed a sport, then in terms of the equity issue, we do provide soccer balls. We do provide you know, lacrosse sticks for those that don't have that. Many choose to bring their own. Many choose to purchase their own and use those instead. But as an entity of the school system, we would have to be responsible for that. It also begs the question, if they're owned by Queen Anne's County Public Schools, where are they stored? How are they transported? Because they can't... Are we allowed? Are we allowed to purchase firearms? Well, if it's an extracurricular activity, we wouldn't be, number one. But uh, sport, a lot of the... Right? If it's a sport, okay. yeah. So again, it's, it's so much more complicated if we try to turn this into a sport or label it as a sport or adopt it as a sport than as an extracurricular activity. And she had a good point. Um, let's try it as an extracurricular at least you know one or two years and see how it goes, um, if the interest is still there and that sort of thing. Um, as far as the, the, the guns go, a lot of the ranges do have their own range guns you know, that mm -hmm. the kids can use and that kind of stuff. Um, and again, it's an extracurricular activity. And the way it was presented was that the, that the students would be providing their own guns. I think Washington College is offered to provide all the ammunition. Nice. And it would definitely, I'm sorry, Mark, I didn't mean to cut you off. The, um, and certainly every other school, uh, firearms, it's not just here that firearms are not necessarily allowed on campus. So there must be other schools in, a, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these programs in public schools. So we, I would think that we could probably reach out to a couple of them to see how they handle storing it. And we have plenty of time if we do the extracurricular pilot first and then um, get all this stuff together before moving it into the sport realm. Yes, and we had reached out to a number of different states. So Maryland does not have any other public school that participates, only private schools. As you know, we reached out to some schools in Virginia, some in Pennsylvania. I did hear back from one school in Pennsylvania who spoke very highly of the program. We didn't discuss specifics on what they do with their firearms, but it is an extracurricular activity there. It's not one of their approved sports. So if this is an extracurricular, will it only be offered to the one school or it will still be open to both? It would still be offered to both. It just has to be registered under one home school per the league. Just like the sailing club. I mean, the sailing, it, it's open to both schools. Yeah. I think it's ninth grade. These are private, right? they use a private sailboat for it. So. Ninth grade through 12th grade. Okay. Well, it's, it, I mean, to me, it sounds like the pilot program to start off with. Extracurricular activity would be the point where it would be a good way to start it off and see what traction we get and where we go to the next step if that's it, it, it does happen. Um, the insurance, I think, needs to be those couple things that we require these coaches to have needs to be addressed up front. So either we we can make sure they have, but we have to make sure they have adequate insurance, but they can make sure that they can pay the premiums. Um, and then and that would be my feeling to move it forward that way. Um, can we vote to move forward? I'm sorry, Mark, what were you going to say? Can we vote? <laughs> <laughs> or just to give you a clear indication. To give us a clear picture. With the five of us and, of course, the superintendent um, are recommending. So I would say that we start with an extracurricular activity, you know, call it that, and um, or adopt it as that. And as far as the pilot program, I'm flexible with whatever anybody else is. I think we have a good direction now, and that's why it was kind of an information item, just mm -hmm. to see where we were at this time and, and get some direction. And I think we have a good direction now, so we can continue to work on it and come back to the board with some additional information as it relates to the coaches and them having their own insurance and what that looks like, costs of that and everything. And that, I think, would eliminate a lot of the other concerns that we do have. Right. Reach out to Mr. Connolly. Yes. We and, can talk uh, directly right. with him, tell now him what some of the parameters will be. Yeah. You know, gauge his concerns, get sure. some feedback from him. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you. Stay thank there, you. Though. <laughs> Dr. Salins, may I introduce? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> This is Dr. Oh. Salins. Oh, hello. Hi. Very nice to meet you. We're nice glad you that, that, that you were able to attend tonight. Um, we did kind of already get to that part of the agenda, but I'm um, looking forward to you taking that seat and um, being here on a regular basis with us, engaging in conversation um, mm -hmm. for the betterment of all the students that you represent. Okay, so, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm Brett Feifel. I'm from Queens County. Um, I'm a senior. I'm a senior going. I'm going into a senior as a Queens County. Um, I do cross country and track. Um, it will be my fourth year for each of them, and I'm on a National Honor Society. And 
that's awesome. That's, 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 that's a lot. Very good. Yeah, thank you. That's very good. That's awesome. Are you with student government as well? Is that no, I haven't gotten student government. Okay. Well, that's a good Thank you. Have you started your um, college searches? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting all your applications yeah. ready for the fall? I mean, I'm, I'm, right now I'm interested in around um, St. Mary's and you know we'll see me on you know we'll see me on them. Nice. That's all awesome. very good. Well welcome this evening. Yes. Thank you. Glad to have you. So Mrs. Bennett, mm -hmm. Mr. Schiffinelli, Mr. Smith, Ms. Morissette. Hello. Everybody here? And you'll meet all the executive team? Mm. Different beta. Yeah, Alexis? Not really much. Yeah. <laughs> I can come up and get a picture of the members. Would you like to, uh, the, the newspapers here like to get a picture of you, and would you Alexis. like to see what please do? Alexis. Alexis, yeah. While well, she's still here. Yeah. Sure. We're here to you again. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over, Brett. Come on over here. Go over there. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It's being part of the day. My camera's dead, so we're just going to be working with the phone. It works. This technology is incredible. Let's see. You're tall. Down in front. Okay. Let's talk to you back here. Here, you want to step down one? Yeah, maybe on the top. Everybody ready? Stay cheap. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so don't go anywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, awesome. So, so you're going to generally propose? Okay, Carl, 30-02, uh, proposed central office building update. Yes. So I am here to talk to you now about the updates for the construction of a new central office building for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. As you might recall, we completed a feasibility study for the central office to determine if the renovation of this building or a new building would be the most efficient and economically responsible option. The result of that study showed that a new building is approximately a million dollars cheaper than doing a renovation. And because of the age of this building, because of the setup of this building, even if we do a complete renovation here, there are gonna be code issues that we just will not be able to solve. So the proposed option is to build a new building. The proposed site is directly across the street from Queen Anne's County High School. It's situated on Vincent Street in the town of Centerville, and it's right in front of the new county building and the YMCA Senior Center site, which they just recently broke ground on. As part of the fiscal year 2022 budget, the county commissioners included $2 million for architectural and engineering planning and design services for a new central office building. So based on that, we would like to begin preparing an RFQ, which is a request for qualifications, which will be publicly advertised for solicitation for price proposals from interested architectural and engineering firms. We anticipate that the RFQ would be available in early August. We will take the submissions in, we'll review them first for the qualifications and for experience on like projects. Then we will have a committee that will shortlist three to five of the top firms based on those qualifications and we'll ask them to submit price proposals. That committee then, which we would hope to include at least one member of the county commissioners and one member of the Board of Education, will take a look at both the qualified firms and their price proposal to make a determination. We would like to select that firm sometime in September or October and get working on the design right away. We anticipate that it would take to about, about six to nine months to do the design. The bidding process late next spring and then we would be ready to break ground the beginning of fiscal year 2023 so that's next july 1st the construction process would take us approximately a year 
going to be necessary for us because the county is proposing to split the construction funding with half in fiscal year 23 beginning next July and half the following year. So we do need to be able to have that construction process follow the timeline there. If we have no delays, the hope would then be to move into the new building late summer of 2023. So hopefully right before the 23-24 school year begins. Exciting. Very exciting. Oh. It is very exciting. Um, you mentioned that there's a $1 million cheaper to do a new one. So what is the total bill for, do we have? It's a $14 million project is what was anticipated when the feasibility study was done. I will put the caveat to that, that we've seen some crazy increases in construction right now. We're certainly hoping that those come back down, but we'll be looking at that closely with the design. Along with that will come cost estimates so we can make sure that we're in alignment with the funding that's been provided. Will it go out to bid as a firm fixed or will it be flexible? Say that again. Will it go out as a firm fixed? If Once we award it, will be a firm fixed price? We would anticipate so. There are a couple different ways that we could do this. The firm fixed would be probably through a general contract. Um, we could also look at construction management at risk, which basically allows um, a construction company to work with us while we design it to identify if there is going to be anything that costs a lot more or if there's anything that is inappropriate in the design and isn't easy to actually construct in the field. Um, there are a couple different ways that we can take a look at that. And as we're doing the design, we're going to keep those in mind too. Yeah, I mean, a little history that Callan High School was done with construction management, a firm called Donahue did that had a great guy that ran the train. I mean, he did it right. I think we got a lot of value um, for that. That worked out well, but it also can bite you in the butt yeah. if things go wrong because you don't have that fixed cost. Um, it all depends on who you get, but it's uh, there's two avenues of that. And, uh, mm -hmm. You know. So when we did Stevensville Middle School, our projected budget at that time was 18 million and we went to 26, with almost 26 with, million. With construction yes. management. Mm -hmm. Because it was, again, we've had so many hidden surprises in that building to begin with. Mm -hmm. well, Canal is new and you know, when you yeah. do run a And it was right, so newer is easier. With the, um, just because, you know, when we say that the prices have come down a little bit, what you're talking like from 10 to $9 for two by four when it used to be $2 not that long ago, would there be any, um, like way for a bonus, like if they come in under budget, because I, I would hope that it's going to continue to keep coming down so that by time they actually go to start constructing, you know, you hope that you're saving a little bit more on your building materials. Yes. Not necessarily incentive. Um, it, there are a couple different factors at play here. So construction management that was done as with some of our prior, prior projects, the process has changed a little bit and now we use what is construction management at risk. So essentially, we don't hold the contracts anymore, the contractor does, and they give us that firm fixed price, but we get some of the benefits of having them along throughout the entire process. The other part of that is that what we typically do is that we build in alternates into the contract so that, let's say, um, we have a budget of 14 million, um, it only comes in at 13. So then we're able to add on maybe an upgraded finish or we're able to add a little bit more square footage. And so we build provisions into the design document so that if we do have problems, there's an easy way to back off of either the size of the building or the construction of the building. If we see a surplus once the bids come in, then we're able to add some of those features that we'd like to get back into the project. And I know that a few years ago, the, and Dick, you probably know more, the county went to where, I don't know if we have any companies of that size in Queen Anne's County, but there was a in, there there was a bonus. You got like bonus points when you bid on a job. Are you familiar with it? Is that something that we do yeah, with but the, mo What we found, most of our local businesses aren't capable of handling something okay. that big or even get bonded for something that big. Um, if they just, did, would they still get they, the bonus, I mean, you know, the, like the electric and the, the HAVC, we've had some local people, especially out of Easton, have bid on stuff, but... Um, there was a few subcontractors. It, it's, it's tough for our anybody in our county right. to be competitive and or be able to be bonded for the levels that we would require but from what I've seen. Okay. 
And the benefit that we have is that this is a county only funded project. So we aren't under some of the parameters that the state funding puts onto us. So it does allow us a little bit more flexibility of the, the geographic location and, and the makeup of the contractors that we solicit. And the commissioners have been uh, fully warned that this building goes back to them. We've had several conversations that that is what happens by law, that this then becomes, we were it's in this, deeded back to the county. We were in this room when we handed um, Southersville Middle School back and Steve Arntz, we gradually took the paper. Do they have the land too? Is it the land or is it just the building? Land and building. The county owned? Building. Okay. I, I've brought it up before. We got the Central Middle School project going. There could be some possible uses there. This building, I know renovation's tough, but then also I think what uh, Tammy says, there's going to be some real issues with this building once we move out of it. I mean, it might cost a million dollars more to renovate it, but it's going to cost probably $3 million to tear it down. And that's just the number I'm picking out of the sky. But, uh, you know, if we, if we don't want it, nobody else is going to want it. So I, I, I have real problems right now going with a new building. I do. I know, I know we need one. Uh, and this is, this is our one building of all our high sc our schools that is the most in need by far. Uh, but well, Mr. Smith, it's nice that the county commissioners understand that it, the full bill falls on them. It does, there's no state money to this. So it's nice yeah, that they but, are but, putting it into their budget. It is very nice of them, but it, it, it's also as citizens and, and, and other people, we have to find out what we're going to do with it. And, and, you know, I just, I don't think enough thought went into some other options, but that's just me. I'm sure the Historical Society will have something to say. Mm -hmm. It is an old building. There is some historic significance to it. Yeah, Not that you couldn't, you know, shave it down maybe and save a piece and or do I something. Mean, I mean, I mean, we I've talked to some of the alumni, which in '66 was the last one. You know, the cupola got, which I know it's falling apart, got put over there or something designed it. That might be a little softening, but but you still got a building that sits on five or six acres that's useless. And what do we do with the rise? Does a rise go with the new building, or does a rise go to one of the high schools? No, that's, 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 that, that was my idea with the middle school. That's a question that has to be addressed. And it, it is a question that needs to be addressed because the design of the building, um, if you put students as, as you know, being participants in that building, it, it's different. The um, regulations, requirements, and, and mm -hmm. restrictions are very different when you have students involved than just an adult building. So that's something that we really need to talk about. Because I think there was some, also some thinking of maybe culinary arts type students, um, you know, participating, you know, having some part of the building. And so that's something I think we really need to discuss. And we haven't had an opportunity to do that yet. So Because then again, it would fall under the state if we were going to have students attached to the building. So exactly. that, and I, and that puts a different Carly, slant She's on definitely it. an expert in that. And I don't want to misspeak. But um, but definitely there are absolutely different guidelines when you have students involved. Now, yes. If I remember correctly, the four plans we were shown did include a rise. We did include them. They are included in the square footage studies that we have done. Um, again, it was just a very high level look at what the potential could be for including them. But again, it falls back to, you know, a lot of questions with curriculum and, and what do we anticipate for that program? What are the numbers that we would like to see out of that program? What CTE programs could we potentially incorporate? What other community functions could we potentially incorporate? Didn't we look at maybe a, a large auditorium room added to that? There's a possibility. Yes, there the two auditoriums are not big enough for a large gathering. Square footage for that was not included. Um, I don't believe the site would allow for something that would give us a, a venue for graduation or something like that. Yeah, unfortunately. I think that's where the, I mean, my, my personal is where the middle school could come play in because you build a new middle school back there, then the middle school could be utilized for some things of that nature if that was incorporated. But I, I know the commissioners, or at least the majority of them, are heavily pushing a new building for some reason at the Pitson Center. And one of the difficulties that we know off the top with utilizing Centerville Middle School for a new building as well as the existing building is that we lose out on play fields. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that the state's very concerned about. Um, the site just doesn't support enough room to have two fully working buildings plus all of the necessary parking plus the play sites. So it's something that we've definitely had discussions about and how that building could be utilized. It's also a 42-year-old building as well and has 
many of the same challenges we see here. We don't have proper ADA compliance at this point. We need fully renovated plumbing systems, electrical systems, lighting systems, interior finishes. Um, Ms. Pullen, have we talked about uh, relocating the Soul City solar panels that would give more space for the playing fields at Centerville Middle? They're by, beside Centerville Middle and on the Queen Anne's County? I'm sure there's other, I mean, there's plenty of other land around. We're 14 years in that lease, so it's getting to the point where it almost could be bought out. Correct. We are. Is, is that wetlands? Because it's, it's pretty low. It's it's very close to a stream. Yeah, right that behind is it. Behind it. And the tree yes. line. It's just going to be in like a flood zone, certain field seasons. I think that's why we, when we did the Solar City contract years ago, that's why we went ahead and put them there. It's because of. Can't use it for Can't use else. it for anything else. Yes. Now, the stream back there, they've already been talking about that. Mm -hmm what they were going to do with it. Some other things to bring up. Yeah. More logistics. For sure. So, I mean, what are they asking us to do to bless this or? At this point, they have not requested that we do anything. It's it's money that has been afforded in the fiscal year budget for 22, and they have asked how quickly we could get it done. So they're asking us to do this, spend $2 million on uh, some architect drawings and stuff for this building on a bits of property. Yes. So they're asking us to ask to move this project forward. Yes. And have indicated that they are putting the funding in for construction $7.5 million in both of the next fiscal years toward this project. Tonight is just an informational item. Mm -hmm. So we put think on this. Yeah, I asked you do the put it on there just because I asked for Isn't it normally 10% for the design? Five. For our so we're, so we're asking for of a fourteen million dollar building. We're asking for about fifteen percent for the design. Is that is that what I'm hearing? If we're asking, for we've million. seen for most of our A and E fees, we are closer to ten percent. Again, once we narrow down those RFQs, then we submit the price proposals, and that's where we have some flexibility in looking if we're between the seven and ten percent that we expect that we would be for those fees. What we've asked for, with some more on the front, is for upfront testing, um, anything that we need to do to get the site ready before construction, some work that could happen prior to actually breaking ground so grading yes yeah they're yes. considered the soft costs so not included in the bricks and mortar basically right yes and that could go up to a million dollars depending on how much at the site Again, requires the did not request for this to go on the agenda i requested it okay. because i wanted information because i oh, was feeling like i was good information we also have so. to hook up to sewer and water and everything else the town so correct we have, we to, have to have the town lots of conversations with the town of centerville we have already met with their planning commission as part of the feasibility study just to give them an idea of what was potentially being proposed we got some feedback from them but there'll be a lot of conversations that need to happen and planning with them as well. Okay. So expected to come back on the agenda, mm -hmm. obviously. Thank you. Just for information, Thank trying you. to get everybody up to speed and knowing what's going on. I, you know, as I said, I, I specifically asked and requested to have an update. And since I didn't know any of it and felt like, well, maybe I didn't know how much the board did or didn't know. So I'm glad that. Well, it's in our know, capital agenda. budget this year. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they've approved that. But which direction we go, I guess, has to be very clear. Yes. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next thing is um, technology. Yes, I think it's Josh here. Okay, come on up. New and board, Dr. Salians. My name is Josh Combs. I'm the supervisor of technology for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I have a couple of uh, annual contract renewals to ask for approval. while you're doing that. Do we have we got our gig bite or whatever we were supposed to get moved up? Yes, we did. So we're at high capacity now and covering. Yeah, we, we uh, basically quadrupled almost what we had before we, uh, we got from last year. Baltimore, it's coming down where yes. it is. And yeah, it's all, already, it's already are enabled and active. Yep. Is it helping any of the hot spots that we gave out? Are the hot Completely spots? Completely separate. 
separate. Totally um, separate. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly Verizon Wireless right. versus our own internal okay. network. Do we have any of the, not to digress, but do we have any of those back? Or are we still using them? Or what are we doing with them? Uh, we ask the schools to collect them, okay. um, except for the kids that I need them. I know you didn't come in and talk about that, it's but fine. it's just, oh, it's <laughs> all have technology. Question, I have an answer. It's, it's right. <laughs> um, so they, they collect them except for the kids that needed them for summer school. Okay. So, you know, we have 100, 150 devices still out there that are being used over summer school. So, they, you know, there's still a need. So we, we definitely lowered it from what we needed as of a couple months ago. I just had a question about the, so is this, the websites, it's for the school's websites as well as the QACPS website? Yes, um, it's one subscription, um, Blackboard. So all of our websites are hosted. So when you go to www.qacps.org, that's Blackboard. And then all the sites are underneath of that. So yeah, it's all one online content management system. How many are we talking on the websites that they're? Um, you know, and basically, we have our main website in the 14 and then just schools. The, okay. hey, just for everybody's clarification, we're talking about Blackboard web hosting first. That's the first one we're going to discuss. Yes, sir. Okay. And I did want to let the board know that I specifically had a conversation because we will be having another item. It's out, it's out right now, um, gathering some RFPs to, to redesign the website. And so that's actually going to be coming in August. And one might say, well, why are you going to approve this now if you're going to go ahead and move forward with another contract to, to develop a new website? But it's because this hosts all of them. And so we won't be able to do them all at one time. Obviously, it takes a pretty long time just to do the, the first Just move one. the content. Right, right. And so it takes a while to do the first one and then the, the other ones will come easier after the first one's done but likely that timeline will be two years for all the schools together. this also includes all the teacher so, web pages if a teacher wants to create a web page this is where they would do it underneath the school that's why you'll so, see that I, I don't want you to get a whole confused. system right yeah. exactly it's basically everything that would be flipped they're going to have to parallel for a period of time until we can fully move over to the new is what i'm suggesting mm -hmm. um we use this last year? Yes, sir. Do we do it just on a one-year contract? Is that yes, the sir. Way? So it's just and about the same, I mean, cost-wise, about the same as last year? Uh, yeah, normally with when it comes to subscriptions, I see it between a 3 to 5% increase per yes. year is what you're going to see, and this isn't in line with uh, the 3% increase you see normally on yearly subscriptions. Did we bid this out or, do you, I mean, I know we've been using them, so it's probably an advantage to keep Yeah, them. honestly, this was in place for a long time. Okay. I, I couldn't tell you, it's, we've been using it for quite a few years. I don't know what if it was bidded or how it was decided on why we went this route versus, say, another route. I can tell you at one time we were on something called School Wires, that's how long ago it was, and then it got bought by Blackboard. Okay. So that's how long we've had it where there was even a transition of a, a, a buyout from School the company wires. we had previously. 2012 school wires. Okay, so yeah, so that's okay. 2013. No, it does say under the terms for number two that it's an auto renewal unless it's uh, unless it says something different in the terms. So are, is this an automatic renewal every year or do we have it somewhere where we're reviewing this each year? I'm just curious. It's still, it it's still a yearly contract. We can still cancel it. I think it's just kind of one of those things where you have to give them 30-day notice in writing mm -hmm. that you're going to cancel it because they they basically bring them every year, but they can't invoice us until we do a purchase order. So yes, they, they still can't okay. charge us for it automatically. It's not like, you know, automatic credit card purchase or something then? like okay. that. So, yeah. okay. We can get out of it when we're ready to switch over to right. a new and, platform. And okay. likely we'll have to reduce it next year because they'll still have yes, to Yes, we, we pay per site. Yeah. Right. So say you moved the four or the four middle schools. Right. We could remove the four middle schools, lower the number of sites on Blackboard, go to a different platform. So that'll be a two-year process. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions? Okay, I have a. Um, do you want to do the next one for the power school enrollment? You want to, just do, you want to approve each one separately? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a purchase for a Blackboard, a uh, purchase Blackboard web certain for $39,155.95. Um, that's a fiscal impact. And budget source is FY22 technology software licensing budget. So moved. Second. Based on the second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next one I've got is uh, Power School. Is that what you're with? Okay. Um, there are two for Power School. Um, so, uh, basically, two different modules. The first one is enrollment registration. 
and back students, we call the back to school forms. It's where you, new students do online registration or returning students to online registration. That is the platform. Um, so that's where they answer all the questions. They upload all their data. That's how we, the, the information gets into PowerSchool electronically. Um, you know, things get checked off and approved and stuff like that. So that's, we've been using it for a few years, and like, like about four years, it's been really successful. Um, I think other counties are starting to adopt electronic uh, registration, but it's been working really, really well for us, especially when it comes to like medical information and making sure you got the proper contact information. That's where we get this um, information from, with, from the parents. It's also another one that we've, like I said, it's an annual renewal. So you're saying with the first one that it's mostly the back to school forms, the registration. Yes. What, then what is the? Uh, the PowerSchool SIS, that is PowerSchool itself. That is our student information system. That's where all of our data, health, attendance. Um, Great. Yeah, the, the main, it's called MMS, which is just made to support. It's basically licensing. Um, we pay for an extra uh, service, so we get automatic updates for appliance. Uh, we back up all of our data offsite for an entire year. Every day it gets backed up for an entire year. If for some reason it was go down, we can spin up and be up with within four hours um, on a like from Azure or like another platform. It was an emergency, so we pay for this. It's such an important. Um, product for everyone when it comes to the administration. So um, we, we everything's in there. So did, did, just curiosity, do they back it up or do we back it up? They back it up every night. I back it up as well because I'm paranoid. Um, so <laughs> I back it up as well. But yes, there is a, a task that runs on the server every night and it gets backed up off site. Off site, yes. But then you also back it up. And then I also back it up. <laughs> Every day. We pay for that storage somewhere else, correct? Mm -hmm. It's like a service we pay to, for automatic remember updates, off, -light, off site service, emergency spin up in case there was, uh, that was a two lost internet or something like that. A two or three year contract? These are yearly contracts this year. No, 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 the storage unit, the storage site. Oh, no, that's, that's, no, that's something, something different. Totally yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just included as part of the service. Okay, thank you. We don't have to worry about the, um, the amount of storage. Thank you. Okay. We have um, our school enrollment registration for $26,395.05, uh, physical impact, and budget source FY22 technology software licensing budget. So moved. Second. Moved in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. We just talked a little bit about Power School SIS. Any other questions on that? I have a question. Okay. Um, last year, with Schoology, they're not talking to each other. Are we fixing that? You talking about grades? Grades. Power school and Schoology. They, you got to jump to Power last year. School to see what's been graded. You got to jump back into Schoology to figure out what still has to be done. It, you, you're. Kind of, I know as a parent, I'm going back and forth to try to figure out what my child has been doing. I know there's a lot of changes happening in August with Schoology. I don't know all of them because Julie handles and Michael were handling um, Schoology, but I do know when it comes to, for what I know about Schoology, like you have to put in the grades a certain way in Schoology for them to show up on the gradebook side. So if it's done properly, they are supposed to sync over. If you set up the correct templates in the, in the way, in, the, in grade a certain way, if they're supposed to sync and talk to each other. I don't know how much improvement that is. I can find out. Um, it sounds but, like professional development well, needs to happen. Yeah, and, and I know that um, Mrs. Hudak is meeting with the um, CNI team, the curriculum instruction team this week, and I know that's part of their agenda. And I, I believe there's more stuff. training coming up than a plan planning was for August to have more training with school watch. I believe that was only part of their contract to, have to do that in August. I, I just know it's a frustration, not only. Mm -hmm. on oh, absolutely! Parents, I understand. You, you want to see everything in one in one class well. of pain, you know. And that's the, yeah. and that's supposed to be one of the major benefits is that it's a single sign-on yeah. mm -hmm. for parents and students. Yeah. So it's something that we absolutely need to address, and we can certainly continue to provide the professional development necessary to make that happen. Absolutely, yeah. it makes some sense. Does that done by each school or just overall when you have a professional development day? Mrs. Hodak, do you know the answer to that? Is that done, did they do that at each school or was it by grade band for 
the school scholarly um, professional development? Have they been doing it by individual schools? They like had schoology specialists, like folks who could speak to it. So they were doing it at individual schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Queen Anne's, there were two, and they I were gotcha. like. Oh, so she's saying every single school had its own reps and had yes. somebody who was like a trainer, so a trainer, trainer, a trainer model, and yeah. then they would address it within the school building, not Correct. necessarily district wide. Yeah. So some of our issues, just people putting information in. Right. right. Well, well, and I think probably COVID had a lot, a little bit to do with mm -hmm. that. That they didn't do something district wide. I, I'm, I'm assuming. Right. Um, right. And they were doing it virtual. Virtual. Well. Yeah. yeah. So that may have had a little bit of a different approach right. than than typical years prior. Too, so. Well, as, as a parent, I can tell you, looking at it from my son's end, he had teachers putting assignments on one way and teachers putting on assignments different ways. So he had to learn where to find the assignments. And then I had to learn Teacher. how to find if he did the assignment and how it was graded, if it was graded. Then I had to jump over to power school. So did he mm -hmm. to see if it was graded, to see if there was something else he had to turn in. It was, it was just a little complicated. Well, yeah. That's that not the way it's supposed to be and and likely because i think a lot of factors knowing that it was first year last year mm -hmm. and knowing that the pandemic and what a difficult time to yeah. try to roll out a new product essentially a new platform i yeah. should say for parents and for students so something that we definitely see amy shaking her head over there definitely need to continue to address because it, it absolutely has to be fixed that's that's not what's in the best interest so it's not good for the student or the parent okay. And thank you for bringing that up so that we can continue to come back to it. Okay, I got a uh, power school SIS for a purchase approval amount of $53,455.34. Fiscal impact, budget source FY22 technology software licensing budget. So moved. Any further discussion? Else? Oh, so moved. Second. Have a first and second. Any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, Microsoft licensing. Well, that's fun. Um, this is exactly as it sounds. Um, it's uh, our Microsoft license for our Windows servers and our desktop clients, uh, and obviously Microsoft Office. Um, 2019 and so forth. So it's, it's another yearly thing that's done through the meet contract through the state. Um, it's kind of one of the things that we're, it's not really, a, we have to have it because um, uh, it's, a, it's a yearly thing. We're on our last year of uh, guaranteed contract money. It'll change again next year. Well, the state does co-op purchasing for as all the counties. So we will see a new type of contract and pricing model next year. But as a, this is the, Price and this is like they were nice because uh, when we do these contracts, they guarantee only a three percent or five percent increase every single year, so you kind of can budget in advance. But um, yeah, it's just it's just licensing for all of our Microsoft products, which for us we're Microsoft here, Windows, Microsoft on our desktops. Um, so, oh, just out of, is this based on our enrollment? Our uh, yes, features, uh, it's or? based on full time equivalent for staff. Uh, full time equivalent for staff. Yes. So our system at here and Baltimore up here and yeah, yeah. Exactly. So every county would have, would like, yeah, you go to a bigger county that say had 2,000 full-time employees, their cost would be would Double be hour. per per employee cost. And so Josh, it's our annual contract, but with Meek, they have a four-year contract. Yeah, basically that. it's a four, yes, it's a yearly contract. What they do is they give a four-year guaranteed pricing model. Um, and right now it's based on full-time equivalent. Unfortunately, it sounds like they want to switch over to not only um, they would get away from the full-time equivalent model, Microsoft, and they want to go to everyone, what they call full-time equivalent, what's called knowledge workers or light workers. People not only might come in three days a week, maybe a contractor, anybody that uses a system more than one day a week, they want to count that person. Maybe at different costs, but they kind of want to, they want everybody to be different price and structure for every single type of worker that you have under your command. Oh, it might be more. It might be more stiffing here. We're, we're obviously trying. Like, we don't want to see something crazy. I mean, luckily this is a statewide purchase for and all the counties are involved. So we're all under the same rules and regulations as far yeah. as the criteria, how we judge it and be priced. Yeah. yeah, organization Meek is the one that the negotiations for the, all the counties. They do uh, Microsoft, Adobe. They do hardware contracts. The state hardware contracts. Um, it's a great organization. Okay, I got a. Purchase in front of us for Microsoft licensing. 
uh, fiscal impact at $59,890.98 out of the 22 technology software licensing budget. So moved. Second. First and second. Anybody? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Jolene Smith. I'm the supervisor of special education. And I bring to you tonight um, several contracts related to special education. I believe the first one, and I'll open it up on here. So the first one is uh, through Saliant Health. It's for a speech pathologist in the amount of, um, oh. Are we doing alphabest yeah. first? Yeah. Let's skip, that's okay. I mean, what's she doing? We can do yeah. 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 Sorry, just skip, that's all right. Okay. Oh, I don't care. I mean, it's she fine. can't. You're good. You're as good. long as possible. All right, did I jump in front of somebody? Sorry. Yep, I did. It's all good. It's okay. Nice We're going to say yes anyway, so just okay, okay. No, go ahead. She's, all right, I'll, I'll right. just jump in front. Yeah, I think she's going to do this. Sorry. I was so excited to get up here tonight. <laughs> Are you going to start? And early. Yeah. It's done. Are you going to start with the speech path? I am. Okay. They just want to know. So I'm just going to go right down the list that's on um, board docs. So the first one is for Saliant Health, and it's for a speech pathologist in the amount of $110, 600, or 110, six hundred or $110,600. $1,682.60. Um, this is for a speech pathologist that covers um, Ken Island Elementary School full time. That is her, her sole assignment, um, and she is there five days a week. I just had a question. In the statement, it's saying we're having a hard time getting speech pathologists. Uh, because other places are offering more. Is it okay to ask how much are we offering a speech pathologist? So uh, the speech pathologists actually come in on our teacher pay scale. They don't have their own pay scale. Um, when they come in, they if they come in with all of their certifications, they enter on a master's level because they are master's prepared. Um, so they would enter relative to their experience level. Uh, there is an additional stipend for speech pathologists that's written into the negotiated contract of an additional $1,000 each year um, that went into effect in 2020. So what would that range be? Um, so I don't have the exact figure with okay. me because again, it's, well, right, it's a range of numbers. Yeah. I think that um, when I just did the research, they come in on a step four and I want to say, oh, I just sent this to you. Mm -hmm. I think it was Not like 40 6,000 maybe, right around there. Now that does not include benefits. Um, that's just the salary amount. Okay. But it is difficult. Um, again, you know, we are competing with neighboring districts as well. Um, and and are there the is a difference. Are the neighboring districts paying more than 110,000? Uh, well, no, so this 110,000 accounts for full year's worth of pay and, and again they're paying the benefits which that initial amount that I provided does not include the benefits. There would be an additional 23% off of their salary plus $171 for life insurance and then in addition to that you would have your benefits which if they came in as an individual would be around just a little over $7,000 for the individual and for a family plan it would be closer to $18,000. Okay, and so the minimum hours is 35, it's, I'm assuming that's per week? Per week. But the t she doesn't have to have a teaching certificate, he or she doesn't have to have a teaching certificate. Speech pathologists are licensed through the, the Board okay. of, of Health. I, I think it's very well noted when we see this figure, you know, we're not talking uh, any other benefits. I mean, just a contracted price. So when we see somebody and some of our teachers, and I think anybody, not teachers, anybody works in, in business, you know, your, your salary can be not double, but can be another third to 40% more mm -hmm. than what you really see. Oh, no, I understand that. I was just wondering what the other, if we're right. not able to get a speech pathologist because other counties are paying more, I'm just wondering what those other counties are paying that, that I think we've we're had paying 110000 are they paying more than 110,000 like in Talbot or and it, Kent? Or? And again, it depends on when where they come in. Um, many of the applicants, we've actually only had three applicants in the past two years. Um, one of them would have come in at a, a step nine. One of them would have come in, I believe at a step, 
I don't remember the, the first one because it was so long ago. And then I just had a, a more recent applicant that was a 30-year SLP. Um, and when you look at, a, at someone with 30 years experience, they would come in at the top of our scale if we were to honor their years of experience. And it, it would well exceed this, this amount. We're still always trying. Um, you know, any time that there is a direct applicant, the, the nice thing about a contract um, for us, not for them, is that there are clauses written into the contracts that allow us to discontinue the contract should we be able to secure a direct hire. And it's always posted on our site, and we're always trying to secure those direct hires when it's fiscally responsible to do so. Thank you. Emanita. Miss Speech Pathology says just one school. This one is just one school. It is Ken Island Elementary School, um, and there is another full time path speech pathologist there. Um, it's our pre K to 2 school, and both of our schools have very high caseloads of speech related students. They also serve um, itinerant services for students that are not yet school age or have not enrolled, so they provide services for that as well. For the infant toddler program? Some of them, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like when this contract, and you're saying it's for this one school, but under this contract, the superintendent could assign them to somebody else, some other school, or is it just for this one school? Um, no, so when, sh when we sign the contract, should we need to change the location of the person, we have the flexibility to do that. They're signing a contract with Queen Anne's County, not particularly that school. Okay. Um, I mean, they too have the ability to say, I want to pull out of my contract, and the, the contracting company would be responsible for providing us a replacement. The problem is we don't just accept anybody. We're going to go through the same process that we would do if it was a direct hire through interviewing and, and vetting that person. So we, we, we vet them too and hire them. I'm not, we don't hire, but we're, we're running through the same situation we run through our regular employee. Absolutely. Yep. And so in, in here we're talking about the uh, consultants guarantee their hours if they're quarantined at home. So if they spend two out two weeks at home, we're going to pay them 70 hours? Is if they're correct? providing the services, yes. Okay. Okay, I've got a contract for approval for speech language services for an amount of $110,682.60, budget at a uh, FY22 unrestricted operating budget. So moved. Second. First and second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. So the next contract that I'm presenting to you um, on the list is Chesapeake Speech. Uh, this contract is in the amount of $282,450. It is being pulled from a combination of the unrestricted and restricted operating budgets. This is actually um, a contract for three speech pathologists. Um, one, and I know Mrs. Bennett, you had this question, um, one of the speech pathologists would be responsible for covering Stevensville Middle School as well as Ken Island High School and that would be a four day a week assignment. So it comes out to be um, 28 hours a week. Uh, the other person would be responsible for four days a week at Kennard and um, Queen Anne's High fine. School and that would also be 28 hours per week. And then the final person would cover uh, Mattapique Elementary School and Mattapique Middle School and that would be for uh, 35 hours per week. This contract is a little bit different because it is a local company, so um, one of the things that we do love about this particular company is we are employing local speech pathologists. Um, unfortunately, they are still already part of that contract agency, um, so, you know, they don't belong to us. So, um, number five of their for the sum of, and it's item five, it says that they're gonna be compensated if we have a delay opening. If they had scheduled hours in the morning, we would still pay them if they missed their AM as a contractor? Yes, and I will tell you that um, for the most part, these contractors have plenty of paperwork to do. So even if we're delayed, they're not sitting at home doing nothing. Oftentimes they come in and they're still working on Medicaid billing or logs or, you know, prepping for their sessions, so. Is this one of the ones where they can do 25% for planning and 75% for the actual um, doing the services? They are compensated for direct and indirect services, yes. Okay, so that would just be part of their 25% and they would not get paid for the 
and service in the morning? So, like, so it wouldn't like be double dipping. No, it's not double dipping. So for example, if they're out for a day, um, they are required to make up those services. So there may be a day when they have four hours of direct service scheduled, but because they missed the day before and they also had four hours, they now have to kind of shove their indirect services over to the day that, you know, maybe they had, right. they had a delay or something along those lines. And they, they are responsible for making up the missed services. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then last question, and I'm, item three, the board agrees to invite the contractors to any relevant board professional development activities. So is that free of charge on there? Do, are, is it, are we incurring any cost at all for providing them these services? So those days are built into the contract. So we structure the contract in such a way that they are included in those professional development days. And okay. the reason being because, you know, we do things the way the Queen Anne's way, which is really in, in alignment with the way that the federal government wants us to do things in terms of paperwork and, and billing and whatnot. Um, but at the same time, there are little you know, minutia that might be different. There may be updates that we want them to be aware of and we all wanna be doing it the same, whether you're a contract or whether you're a direct hire. So we really see the value and importance in them participating in the same professional development that our staff are participating in. So we're, we're really having that continuity of care across okay. the board. So on the PD days, are they being paid or are they just participating in the PD days? They are being paid for their time. So they're working under the same conditions our teachers will be working under and things of that nature. Yes, I mean, we are asking them to come so that we can ensure That's that their provide. quality of delivery is up to par. Okay, I have uh, Chesapeake Speech Apparel Services uh, for the amount of $282,450, uh, FY22, unrestricted and restricted operating budget. So moved. Second. Fish and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. The next contract that I bring before you is for Watts Consulting, and this is an occupational therapy service for our infants and toddlers population in the amount of $82,536, again, from unrestricted and restricted operating budget. This is for a total of 90.5 hours per month, and again, this is um, limited to our infant and toddler population. How many infants do we have in the program? Um, I think the last I checked, it was hovering around 58, um, but that number is a fluctuating number every day. Um, and actually, many of our surrounding districts have seen a pretty, pretty high spike in that, and you know we're starting to see that increase as well. So a lot of people are kind of coming out. Smith, isn't that just North County? 58? I thought that there was at least 100 in the in the program. In infants and toddlers? Mm -hmm. um, I would have to double to check three? the number. Yeah, where did we hear that number? For some reason, I thought it was much higher. Than it might be higher. Do, I, I, perhaps I'm, I'm okay. misquoting it. Or maybe we're number. hearing an old number. So I remember it being much more than that. I can get you it's the exact number. Yeah, to know. Thank you. I work with a nurse that does the home assessments. I mm -hmm. she's busy. Yes. And, it, and getting busier. So is that what the program is, is they travel out and just visit the homes and do? It is, it's intended to be a home-based kind of that natural environment mm -hmm. service delivery model. So it's a lot of coaching and training parents just as much as it is providing direct services to students or to children at really at that age. But, but and that is birth, it can go all the way up to, to four and kind of starting to exit out between four and five. But they're, they're registered in our, in our school system. Yes. So, I mean, when you go out to talk to parents, it's the, the, I mean, those children are, their students are in our system. So they're in our system, we're, correct. We're, the, the premise is early intervention. Right. So, I mean, they move may move out of the county before they ever get to our school system, but another school system still does an infant and toddler program. So when my daughter was born, they came into assessment, she got OTPT speech, she got it all at home until the three-year-old program started. The earlier you get to them, the development is better. Right, mm -hmm. but I guess my question is, they're enrolled as far as our count, student count. 
No. no. So yeah, not until they're really school it. age. Once they become the age that they would count as a school age student. So like, for example, we do have a three, like if you're three years old, you can be enrolled as a three year old student. Um, but if you are still receiving home services, you are still part of the infant and toddler count that we submit, but you're not part of the school system count. And for funding reasons, it's really a K-12. So even the pre-K-4 students. As that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so none of these see, students. That's why they're in our still camp. enrollment. When you see enrollment numbers out there, mm -hmm. the variation is usually your pre-K-3-4 program um, that makes it a variation of. Um, and this and so, the toddler program. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're not in there. And they do, they count for our special education count, so we do get special Federal education funding. Right. funding for the infant and toddler program. Okay. I will tell you there's a very big difference between what we, re we receive for infant and toddler funding versus our school age services. However, they are making leaps and bounds in that area as well. And about time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've got a Watts Consulting uh, for a tune of $82,536. Uh, FY22, unrestricted and restricted operating budget. So moved. Second. The second. All those in favor say aye. 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 contract is for Wendy Carpenter who is also in occupational therapy. Wendy provides um, occupational therapy to our school age population. She covers the southern schools in the county. Um, so she covers um, you know pretty much Graysonville South. Um, she does do some assessments and and you know services when needed north of Graysonville, but primarily that is her jurisdiction that she covers. Um, the contract is in the amount of $96,525. And again, this does come from restricted and the unrestricted budget. And this contract is directly with her? It is. It is her company and it is. Oh, her, okay. That's what she calls her company. Okay, it's her company, so she works under. Mm -hmm. So we have we don't have any issues with FICO or any other stuff. Any things we have to pay? It's, it's she takes. It's, that's take all. In, yep. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Andy Carpenter for uh, contract for a tune of $96,525, FY22 restricted, unrestricted operating budget. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice habit. And the last contract that I have for you is for CompuClaim, which is our medical assistance billing program. Um, so last year we moved from paper billing over to CompuClaim. So now we're able to electronically file logs and um, bill with the state and the federal government to reclaim any funding that, that we are entitled through, med through Medicaid assistance funding. The platform is at the cost of $25,000 and it is funded through the restricted operating budget. Was this a competitive bid? Did we have other companies that do medical billing? Um, we did do an RFP when we secured this. Um, I don't know that we were able to secure three competing companies. I think we were only able to secure two at the time of the bid. Um, it, it's still relatively new. Um, and we did compare it to other districts in the on the shore that are also using electronic billing and they too have gone with CompuClaim. How many, how many, the Medicaid, is that just for all of our staff? Is it for? No, this is for students Medicaid that students are. For the special. It's for students special. receiving services like OTPT, hands-on. Right, so how many hearing. claims are we talking in a monthly? Do you know on average how many times, how many claims we're making? Yes. And That's a lot. It's, it's yeah, a, lot. a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Um, so for any, uh, if a child is eligible and they have medica medical assistance coverage, um, any direct service that is a medical service that is provided in the educational setting um, can be billed. So speech therapy services, each service. It's each bill. It's, not it's based like on the saying, IEP. Okay. So whatever the educational team determines is appropriate for that student to make success. Those services 
services translate to billable services for MA. So if they have OTPT speech, you bill for all of those. Right, but I mean, are you billing every time that the service is given? Are you billing once a month? Are you billing weekly or? or every time that the, the service, service is, okay. every time the service is given, a log is recorded and then it is it is sent in as a bill. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Re reimbursable mm -hmm. is essentially right. what we do. Yes, and we do have annual audits where they come in and review um, to ensure that the services are being provided and that they are up to snuff with their expectations. And if they're not, then well, they've we just do had have one, right? Back. This was their first year. Okay, great. Oh, we no, we've had these for right for the paper. Oh, was cut. Who did so, the paper before? Was that in house or was that? It's always it's all in house. We do have a medical assistance biller who is okay. responsible for doing that. But the audits have been for years. Um, it's just it was paper based before, and now it's so much easier yes, with I'll the bet. electronic. It it has allowed us to um, recoup additional funds as well because there are fewer things that are missed, and we can resubmit bills that that were not applicable at one time because perhaps the child wasn't covered, and now they are. And we can rebuild, and and right. the system automatically does that. Right. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. For other questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Computer claim uh, platform uh, impact fee of twenty five thousand dollars out of FY twenty two restricted operating budget. So moved. Second. And the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you for allowing me to skip. <laughs> Thank Carl. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening once again. I am here this evening uh, on behalf of Amy Cummings, who is our out of school time coordinator. And I wanna thank her for her hard work in putting this contract together. Um, this evening, we're asking approval of a contract with Alphabest Education to provide our before and after care services to the students of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. This is a one year contract. It has a renewal option for three years in one year increments. This recommendation is being made after an RFP process. They received two submissions to that RFP. The local management board as a group reviewed those submissions and made a recommendation for the successful group, which is Alphabest. This is a revenue source for the fiscal year 2022 operating budget. The amount is to be determined. That is based on the number of locations that Alphabest is able to staff. That is based on the number of days that they're able to provide service. And it also depends on whether or not they opt to do summer programs next year. So, so basically, the students or family members or staff members pay for the service that's correct so is it have any negative cost to this board no at this point the only the only cost essentially uh, would be facilities and they are um, recouped with the cost of the contract so when we say open revenue if, if it's a a thousand students or a hundred, it's prorated. And also, don't remember last year they had trouble finding staff, didn't they, to do this? So, I mean, it wasn't offered. I mean, some people were very disappointed because it wasn't around, not that anybody's fault, but if you can't have staff, you don't have a, have a program. That's correct. Is it they, our only before and after program that we offer is through Alphabest? It's only, it's also out of school days. So on right, days I mean, that are is planned. This the only, are, there, are there any other before and no, after this programs is, that go on? Yes, so we do have our internal PFY program program that is also an after school program but that is part of the school schools offering this is an outside before and after care service it comes into our schools mm -hmm. correct they now, utilize the, our facilities you've got the building use and fees and they say exhibit b and i know that we're reviewing that policy yes what is the building fees that they're paying per building so they pay five hundred dollars a month they pay 750 if they're combining locations so if we have two buildings that are close to to one another, let's say Bayside Elementary School and Ken Island Elementary School. If they choose to only run one location and have all of the students from those two schools go to one, then it's a $750 fee. Okay, so it's not two different things. So I was reading, I was thinking they were paying a building use fee and on top of that, the 500 a month, but you're saying they're just paying 500 a month. Correct, it's 500 a month where the additional fees come in. If it's a day that we are not in the buildings, but they are utilizing services and we also charge them for HVAC as well as custodial services that are necessary. Okay. 
And the 500 a month is for, so it's five days a week in the morning and it's five days a week in the afternoon, of course, with the out of school days. Um, Depends on our schedule, but yes, they have the option to do before school care starting at 6.30 in the morning until school time and then from 3.30 in the afternoon until 6 p.m. So it's both a benefit to our staff if they have children there and it's a benefit to the public if they're working and that can, uh, the students can be dropped off and picked up at a later time. Yes. There's also in the... Um Oh, what section is it? The building use and fees, the next page over though, we're talking about Alpha Best will agree to accept subsidies. What subsidies would that be and who would be paying those subsidies? So I believe those are federal subsidies. So if there is an allotment um, to a family to assist with Before with the and cost. after care. And yes. care system. Okay. Thank you. And just, I could, the morning wouldn't be a problem, but in the evening, if it's 6 o'clock and they're shutting down and some parents are running stuck on the bridge, what happens then? That's the Alphabet staff, and they have a protocol for that. Um, and honestly, I don't know that it's covered in the contract or if that we ask for that information, but sometimes with the before and after care, there is an additional cost that they'll charge the parents, but, but that is... But, 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 I mean, we have janitors or some security there, but they're going to stay there until the last yes. client or student yes. leaves, and then, and then that's their responsibility. It is their sure responsibility, so. correct. Okay. I have a proposal contract for Alpha Best Education. Um, it is uh, revenue to be determined basically because it's a wash. They, it's a pay as you pay. The people using will be paying for it, and then we will, depending on how many uh, schools they utilize, that's what revenue, which is pretty much offsetting our cost. And uh, we've got in the FY22 operating budget, but I think it's one of those things where you see revenue and expenses that should be a zero. Second. And second, all those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you, and thank, thank you for accommodating that. Oh, thank you for waiting. Okay. Chair. Our future meetings, and then next week we will meet again Wednesday, which is our regular work session at. Uh, our meeting will be at four at five o'clock. Our closed session will be at four if necessary. Any further business? A motion to go and exactly close. Pursuant to general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction and to perform an administrative function. Second. Second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Good, good, good. Closed session, thank you.